Recruiting rankings versus results. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down what we've seen in the recruiting rankings with another National Signing Day behind us for 2019 versus how those programs have developed that talent and what has been the result on the field. Who are the overachievers? Who are the underachievers? And yes, we are going to complete our series on our conference rankings for 2018, so hang on there. We've completed our five videos on the Big Ten, the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12, and the Pac-12, and our introductory video where we explain our process and formula. We just have to finalize the numbers, bring my objective analysis into it, and then provide our final conference rankings. I don't have that information with me. It's on the way, but I was excited uh, to come up with this idea of looking at recruiting rankings since we just completed the 2019 class and how those recruiting rankings have translated on the field. Check out the Clemson-Alabama comparison for the 2018 National Championship and the two rosters and the recruiting rankings that built those two rosters for Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney. Now I'm taking the comparison between uh, Florida, Florida State, and Miami. Of course, the Sunshine State uh, produces arguably the best talent in high school football, along with Texas and California, and the three major players in the state, despite the emergence of UCF, Florida, Florida State, Miami. Of course, uh, Florida State won a national championship in 2013, the final BCS title game. And since then, it's been a bit of a downtime for all three schools. They've had some decent play, some decent seasons, but also some rough times, some down times. So let's compare the recruiting rankings from those three programs that are competing against each other for the same players and how those uh, recruiting results have translated to real results on the field. So overall record for Miami, Florida and Florida State in 2014 through 2018. These are the five classes that produced the 2018 season, uh, including all the way through to a redshirt senior season. For Florida, they've gone 40 and 23. 40 wins, 23 losses since 2014. Florida State's just a bit better at 45 and 20, two and a half games better. Actually, that would be four games better for Florida State at 45 and 20. Miami at 40 and 25. So Florida State with the best record at 45 and 20. Then Florida at 40 and 23. And then Miami at 40 and 25. In conference with two of these teams, of course, playing in the ACC and the other in the SEC, Florida and Florida State are both 25 and 15 in conference play since 2014. Miami is just one game behind at 24 and 16. All right, now when it comes to winning championships, it's been a downtime for all three schools. None of them have won a national championship, of course. Florida State, the most recent in 2013. For Florida, you've got to go back to 2008 and for Miami, 2001. Florida State won a conference championship in 2014. And Miami and Florida have not won conference championships during this time. Division championships, Florida did go to Atlanta in the SEC championship game as the Eastern Division winner twice during this time frame, 2015 and 2016. For Florida State, of course, 2014. Miami has a division championship in the Coastal in 2017. In terms of AP final rank, Florida has finished ranked three times in these five seasons. They finished uh, number 25 in 2015, number 14 in 16, and number 7 this past season, finishing 10 and 3 in 2018. For Florida State, they have finished ranked three times in the five seasons, number 5 in the nation in 2014 after they lost the Rose Bowl in the college football playoff to Oregon, number 14 in the nation in 2015, losing to Houston in the Peach Bowl, and number eight in the country, Florida State in 2016 after winning the Orange Bowl by one point over Michigan. 
Florida State, of course, out of the rankings the past two years at 7-6 and six and 5-7. and seven. For Miami, they have finished ranked in the top 25 twice to finish the season. Both under Mark Richt, 2016, number 20 in the country after they defeated West Virginia in the Russell Athletic Bowl, and then number 13 in 2017 after the three-game losing streak, losing to Wisconsin in the Orange Bowl. So, again, Florida's been ranked three times in the five seasons at numbers 25, 14, and 7. Florida State ranked three times, number 5, 14, and 8, and Miami ranked twice at 20 and 13. That means Florida's average ranking during these five seasons has been number 29. Now, now how did I come to that uh, conclusion? Well, they were just ranked three times out of five seasons, so I took their record the other two seasons, and I gave it a judgment call of a ranking, whether that was number 35 or 40 or 50 uh, for Florida. So during these five seasons, their average ranking, number 29, for Florida State, they've been ranked three times at the conclusion of the season in these five seasons. Their average ranking, number 27, Miami's average ranking at number 35. Okay, now let's look at the recruiting. Because all of these numbers, the results on the field are fairly close. 40 and 23 versus 45 and 20 versus 40 and 25. Uh, conference records exactly the same between Florida and Florida State and just one game behind for Miami. Recruiting, though. Florida State, by far, had the highest recruiting ranking since 2014 an average recruited class of number 5.4 in the country, number 5.4, with 62 four-stars and 11 five-stars. Florida State at 5.4. Florida next at 13.4. And then Miami at 16.2. And again, with Florida State, they have signed 11 five-stars, Florida with two five-stars, Miami with one five-star, Florida State with 62 four-stars, Miami with 44, and Florida with 35. Those are the results between Florida, Florida State, and Miami, of course, based on what Dan Mullen uh, accomplished going 10-3 and three and finishing in the top 10 in 2018, Combined with a top-level recruiting class in 2019, uh, we would think the trajectory for Florida looks the best right this second. Miami probably second, considering that Manny Diaz was able to uh, take advantage of the transfer portal to uh, improve a lackluster recruiting class. And of course, for Florida State under Willie Taggart, no quarterback was signed in 2018 or 2019 but he did bring in a top 16 recruiting class. Those are the numbers, again, between Florida, Florida State, Miami. You let us know maybe some key figures over the last five years that we missed. Of course, Florida and Florida State uh, play every year. And, of course, Miami and Florida State play every year. And this year, there seems to be more discussion and debate about these three programs because they all play as Miami and Florida kick off the 2019 season on August 31st in Orlando. Would appreciate greatly to keep this channel going when, whether you subscribe, share, like the videos, and comment to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We'll see you next time.